Hello and welcome. I'm the Candyman and you're watching Apocatips on State of Decay 2. Alright, so in today's Apocatip, we are giving you a beginner's guide on how to get started in State of Decay 2. So, without further ado, let's get started. Tip number one. Choose the right difficulty. In State of Decay 2, there are five different difficulty levels to choose from, with Green Zone being the easiest and Lethal Zone being the hardest. Uh, now, to make sure that your community starts off on the right foot, you want to make sure that you're choosing a difficulty level that A, fits your intended playstyle, but B, also fits your abilities as a gamer. Uh, so, also keep in mind that you can actually change the difficulty level mid-game uh, during your playthrough. But like I said, there's five difficulty levels to choose from. Uh, now, with Green Zone, this is the most peaceful uh, experience. So this is great if you're a beginner, maybe you're new to the State of Decay series, um, or you just don't really take the game that seriously and want more of a sandbox style where you're focused on building and gathering resources uh, with minimal interference from zombies. Now the next two levels are where I choose, or I should say I suggest most people to choose uh, either Standard or Dread. Now Standard uh, is relatively balanced, and Dread is just a slightly bit harder. A good way to do it, way to do your, one of your first playthroughs is probably to start at standard. Maybe if early on you decide that's a little bit too easy, you can bump it up to Dread, or maybe you wait until you actually finish a playthrough. Uh, but like I said, standard or Dread is where I recommend most players to start. I highly recommend staying away from Nightmare or Lethal, unless perhaps you're very experienced with the first State of Decay game, or maybe you're just very, very good at gaming and you're very confident in your abilities uh, and you really want to push yourself. Tip number two, choose the right survivors. So in State of Decay 2, you have three survivors to start a new community with. Uh, now the community selection screen, so this screen that you see right before you start your community, actually gives you some pretty good insight in each one of these survivors traits and skills uh, so what you want to do is you want to look for traits uh, that impact your survivors positively obviously um, but those bonuses are highlighted in green under traits so as you can see generous gives a 25 percent increase in standing rewards now not to get too far off in the weeds here i would argue that 25 percent increase in standing rewards is actually a bad thing uh, but just for a beginner's sake, um, anything that's green is a good thing, and then anything that is red is a bad thing. So if you look for, or I should say look at, Fears Needles, you'll see there's a 20 point reduction in their max health, which obviously goes without saying, but it's a bad thing. Now, each survivor is gonna have up to five skills. They all have these four core skills, so cardio, wits, fighting, and shooting. And they may, or in this case, may not have a fifth skill. Uh, so this person has a fifth skill, they have cooking. Uh, now we do have videos that break down all the traits and skills, you know, what to look for and what to avoid. Uh, so be sure to check those out after the video. So it's kind of a balancing act because you can re-roll. So keep that in mind. Uh, you can keep re-rolling survivors until you find the most optimal three for your liking. Tip number three set your goals now obviously the ultimate goal of the game is to wipe out all the play cards in any specific territory uh, but every day you should be setting goals for your community to achieve uh, so that could be working towards securing a new survivor so you got to decide what do you need to do to get a new survivor right uh, so first of all you have to make sure that you've got enough food uh, potentially enough influence uh, if you're trying to recruit them from another enclave but really the idea here is you want to make sure that you're always working towards something, however small, every day. Tip number four, customize your loadout. So in State of Decay 2, you have the ability to edit the loadouts of each and every one of these survivors in your community. Uh, so what you want to do is with survivors that are back at your base, you want to make sure that they are equipped with weapons to defend themselves. Now with the survivor that you have uh, that you're going to be taken out into the wild or the world, so to speak, uh, you want to make sure that they are properly equipped for the situation. So I like to always make sure that my character has 
A, a bag of snacks, um, and B, some sort of health item, um, some sort of painkillers. Uh, reason for it is because State of Decay 2 is pretty unpredictable, uh, so you may get in some sticky situations, and you want to make sure that you're able to heal yourself if you get banged up, um, and B, also be able to uh, eat some snacks to make sure your stamina is high enough so you can actually get away from the situation, the sticky situations. And then you want to make sure that you're carrying uh, a weapon of some sort. Uh, but yeah, so you want to make sure that you have your loadout customized to whatever the current situation is. Uh, if you are going on a looting run, you know, you want to keep your backpack as empty as possible. But if you're going to attack a play cart, you want to make sure that you have um, the necessary supplies to make sure that your survivor is in the best uh, possible position to take down that play cart. Tip number five cars are king so in state of decay 2 vehicles are extremely important and you want to do whatever you can to make sure that they stay in tip-top shape they are great for looting runs uh, they are also good for taking out hordes um, and killing zombies so uh, thinning the amount of zombies that are attacking you and then finally uh, the most obvious use for cars is that you're able to traverse the map quickly so anytime you do find a vehicle, you want to make sure to try and keep it in the best possible shape that you can. Um, and also you want to accumulate or collect as many vehicles as you possibly can. Tip number six, loot strategically. So in State of Decay 2, you want to make sure that you are optimizing and being as efficient with your time as you possibly can. Uh, so when we talk about looting strategically, it means that when you are looting a site, you want to make sure that you value things like rucksacks, um, weapons, um, you know, any sort of throwables like molotovs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, also, what you want to make sure that you're doing is when you are scavenging, you ideally want to leverage the usage of a vehicle, right? Because you can store stuff in the trunk of your vehicle. Now, also, you want to go ahead and try to scavenge and loot around any sort of base or outpost you may have. The reason for that is because it's a short distance from your scavenge point, right? So the buildings that you're scavenging and the drop-off point. This is just the most efficient way to loot. Tip number seven, be a good neighbor. Now in State of Decay 2, you're going to run across other enclaves. Uh, so what you wanna do is you wanna maximize these relationships and leverage them. Uh, so you wanna try and help as much as you possibly can. Uh, the reason for it is because what happens if you start ignoring other enclaves' mission, they can reduce their diplomacy status with you. So they can go from being neutral or friendly all the way down to cold or even hostile. And if they are hostile, um, you go to their base and they will end up shooting and attacking you. So obviously you want to avoid that. Um, the also the good thing with uh, having a allied or friendly relationship with each one of these enclaves is that you can actually trade with them and get some of the resources that you may need. Um, the better your relationship, uh, the slightly cheaper um, the cost of trading goods with them will be. Now, another reason why you may want to consider keeping good relations between yourself and neighboring enclaves is if you run into any sort of trouble attacking play cards, you can actually run over to a neighboring enclave, and as long as they're not hostile, and even if they are, they'll actually go ahead and attack the zombies. So, a nice little cheesy method to help get yourself out of a sticky situation. Tip number eight, leverage outposts. So in State of Decay 2, you are able to use outposts. So you want to make sure that you're using them to the best of their abilities. Uh, so first off, let's talk about placement. So ideally with your outposts, you are placing them in areas that either A, have a bunch of loot for you to scavenge, or B, have a play cart nearby. So that way, in case the situation gets hairy during a play card attack, like let's say your survivor uh, contracts the blood plague and maybe you don't have any cure left, you can easily run back to an outpost, uh, put them in an infirmary, and then switch survivors. Also with outposts, you want to make sure that the type of outpost um, is most viable for your community. So if your community needs a bunch of food, um, go ahead and make sure that you're using as many food outpost as you can. Uh, now with any site, you will be able to see 
um, if they are able to produce any sort of resource or not. Uh, so you want to make sure that each one of your outposts is actually doing something in terms of bringing you resources. Now, secondly, uh, you also want to make sure that you are leveraging the abilities of each outpost. Uh, so you want to make sure that uh, you, if you want to teach your survivors an ability, uh, that you are using the ability to do so within each one of your outposts. So you can do that. Also, you want to make sure that you, when necessary, are leveraging outpost defenses. Uh, so you can actually set up mines to blow up hordes as they come past your outpost. Or B, you can actually take the heat off your base and have the um, Plague Heart, uh, if it's awake and attacking you, uh, you can actually have it attack the outpost instead of your uh, base by using Infestation Bait. Uh, and then finally, uh, you want to make sure that your outpost is upgraded to its full potential um, so that way it's bringing in as many resources as possible like we talked about earlier tip number nine avoid conflicts so in state of decay 2 as you will notice there are zombies everywhere uh, but what you want to do is you want to make sure that you're avoiding conflicts as much as you possibly can for a couple different reasons uh, first off your survivors can take injuries, right? So they can lose their health. Uh, they can also take injuries that actually impact, or I should say affect their stamina. Uh, they can actually have their stamina reduced for a time being. So you wanna make sure that you're avoiding conflicts as much as you can. Another reason is that the more zombies that you kill, uh, the harder that the game gets. Uh, so the way to think about it is like this. If you kill anything in State of Decay 2, it will incrementally make your game harder. Um, if you kill something like play cards, it will do a lot more uh, towards making the game harder. Uh, but basically, the more you kill, the harder the game gets. Tip number 10, attack strategically. So if you are deciding that you are having to engage for whatever reason, uh, you wanna make sure that you are attacking smart, right? You're attacking strategically, like I said. Uh, so th what that typically means is that you are attacking um, or at least being mindful of where all the freaks are uh, because zombies, or I should say freaks like screamers, uh, can definitely make things get hairy pretty quickly. Uh, so you want to make sure to try and take them out first. Uh, so once you've attacked strategically in terms of wiping out the freaks, um, let's talk about big picture as well. So what you want to do is when you are considering which play cards to attack next, uh, you want to make sure that you're focusing on play cards that are already awakened. Uh, because if you start attacking just all the play cards at once, uh, they can actually all send infesting hordes towards you. Um, they can set up siege sites near your base. Um, obviously, they can make infestations, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, so what you want to do is ideally you only have maybe one or two play guards uh, at a time that are awake and that are actively trying to uh, attack you. Uh, so like I said, make sure that you're attacking strategically um, by also trying to clear out portions of the map. Uh, so trying to make essentially what are called safe zones. Well, I mean, th there are literal safe zones in the game, uh, but I also like to use the word safe zone as well. Ideally, it's an area where you've cleared all the play cards from the area. Um, you've scavenged and looted the area, but it's places that you know that you can go and they are uh, relatively safe. Uh, so you want to make sure that you are wiping the map um, in segments, right? So make sure that you're, like I said, creating safe zones. What you really don't want to do is be bouncing around too much and splitting your focus and awakening play cards that you don't need to awaken. Thanks for watching, and if you want to check out more tips and tricks about State of Decay 2, be sure to check out our Apocalypse playlist for more. The series where we give you, the viewer, tips and tricks on how to better survive the zombie apocalypse. Now, if you have a tip or trick that you feel like would be helpful for other survivors to know, go ahead, leave a comment down below, and you might see it featured in the next video. Now, if you found this video helpful, go ahead, hit the like button. Also, consider subscribing as well, and you'll get better at surviving the zombie apocalypse. I promise.